Hello everyone and uh, welcome to yet another video. In this video I'm gonna talk a lot about the, all the different types of hairs that are used in fly tying. So we're gonna cover all these different types of hairs, exactly what they're used for, what their properties are and what their strong suit and not so strong suits are. So today we're talking fly tying and we're talking fly tying hairs. We're gonna sort this and start out this 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 project by talking about the different hairs um, compared to the overall length of these hairs. And uh, and uh, the first thing we're gonna talk about is the pine squirrel. Pine squirrel is a really really awesome material, but the length of the individual hairs here on on a pine squirrel like this is relatively small. Um, the the number of hairs here are quite dense. And also the uh, the colors of these uh, these pine squirrels are at the base quite quite dark, which means they are difficult to, for instance, make a completely completely uh, uh, completely hot pink color. So these have some earthy tones to them, most of these, and they are available. It, it's it's possible to buy a full pelt like this. I have just sungered this uh, for myself, but it's 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 they are available at Nordic Anglers in in a in a full pelt where you where you basically you buy the the whole uh, the whole pelt here from from a squirrel or you can you can buy which is the the, the product that we sell the most of you can buy them uh, pre sungered in smaller quantities as I said the hairs here are relatively small um, making uh, making the the pine squirrels here ideal for certain types of flies pine squirrels is used a lot for micro songer flies like this for for flies that that imitate smaller bait fish like smaller gobies and and stuff we use them in particular uh, in particular a lot for uh, for the the coastal sea trout for for goby patterns but any any type of sculpin um, uh, type of bait fish uh, that that you tie is is really really working well in the smaller sizes with the uh, with the pine squirrel here another thing um, that that the pine squirrel can be very very effective for are smaller um, sunkered uh, tube flies and and salmon and sea trout flies the pine squirrel in general is a very very vivid and and very very rapid moving material in the water so if you have a, a sunker wing like this uh, then, uh, then of course you can you can make this as long as you like but but if if, if you imagine this out in the current here you can really see that the movement here is is very very rapid very very lively and it just looks great in particular on smaller flies so the the squirrel is easy to use but best suited for the smaller flies next up is the bisam and bisam is uh, is is basically uh, the stage in between the squirrel and the uh, the uh, the next up the uh, the rabbit. Uh, bisam is is awesome because the density of hairs on the bisam is really 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 high, which means that you have a lot of hairs on even the thinnest of these songer strips. Uh, they are available um, in both uh, in both pre-cut pieces, but also in uh, in in a in a piece of pelt, so you can cut exactly the the wing that that you need for for your fly tying. I use these again uh, primarily for for songa flies. The hairs here are a bit too short for 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 the overall uh, use of uh, uh, as 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 a dubbing loop hackle. Um, but but the uh, the effect of of one of these wings is um, is again uh, completely magnificent uh, in the water. Um, the leather is is thin, and uh, and and what the uh, what what makes the um, uh, the bisom stand out is also that it has some longer coarser hairs uh, that normally do not soak up the color as much as the uh, as, as the, the the woolly part of of, uh, of the the bisom here making this um, giving this a really really nice effect uh, of, of having you know stripes that that just contrasts to the uh, to the general color um, it's a material that is is not as widely used as both the uh, the squirrel and and the rabbit 
but still it's 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 really a material that that i uh, use more and more frequently and um, be because it has just the perfect length for a lot of the salmon and sea trout flies that uh, that i use in my everyday fishing so the uh, the bism here if you haven't tried that out i i urge you to do so it's 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 really really a cool cool product um, and uh, and it has some unique properties that makes this excellent for uh, numerous different types of, of flies that you normally used uh, squirrel or even uh, or even rabbit for. So check that out. Check out the bism. So here is the rabbit, and uh, and the rabbit is probably the most widely used and 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 most familiar to many of you uh, material for making songer flies. It's the classic way to go. The rabbit is is longer, um, but it's it's perfectly suited for for streamers and for salmon flies in particular, but of a certain size. I have a, a rule of thumb that 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 basically is if the if the hook size is six or above, then it it will be uh, greatly suited for for the rabbit. Rabbit is probably one of the most alive materials. Uh, of all out in in the water it it just has an awesome awesome movement um, and and a small a stickle back imitation like this one the tail here really really moves erratically and it just it just looks like a million bucks in the water it's a it's a fairly inexpensive material um, and they are available in in full rabbit pelts where you can cut your own songers but most people buy a, a because a, a rabbit pelt is quite big then most people buy a smaller amount and and basically buy uh, buy a bag of uh, of of, uh, of pre-songered uh, rabbit strips also because they are available in some really really awesome colors. Um, another thing that's great about these uh, the the rabbit hairs here is is they're a bit too small for to actually be used for um, for um, for wings on flies uh, in their own right. But what they are perfectly suited for are to make make hackles. Uh, in, a, in a dubbing loop using these and and I do this a lot uh, in particular I have one that's called the eternal which is is, is a Danish coast fly that, that catches a lot of fish one of my favorites where where I make the front hackle out of these rabbit hairs and um, you can also do that to to give your to really really give your your big tube flies um, that final finishing touch that pushes a lot of water but still has a lot of of, of, uh, of vibrancy and and just just makes the fly look really really awesome in the water. Another thing about the rabbit is, um, uh, despite the fact that the, that the the pelt here or the leather piece of, of this uh, where the hair is attached is is as thin as it is um, on, on the fly tying we have here at, at Nordic Anglers, uh, then um, the the leather uh, strips here they will soak up some water, making uh, making uh, this a relatively heavy material uh, if you use it in larger quantities on really big flies. There is a lot of cool streamer patterns out there like the uh, like the uh, the rabbit uh, the rabbit bugger uh, and, and and stuff like that but but it's important not to overdo this because uh, when you see this in the water uh, and I myself have, have tried it and, and been tempted by this a lot of times you basically you basically could have a killer pike fly if you just tied in a hook into this and just cast it out there and 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 retrieved it but it would make a really, really heavy, heavy, heavy fly. A fly that would be really heavy to cast. So, um, if you decide on using rabbit for your bigger flies, um, take into account that the, the, the leather here will soak up water, making your flies quite a lot heavier to cast than, than without the rabbit. Um, so basically, uh, one of the best materials out there, one of the most easy, accessible materials out there for your all-time go-to uh, songer and uh, and bait fish imitations, you know, for for sticklebacks and and smaller bait fish from a size six to maybe down to a size four. Um, um, it's also used widely in a, in a lot of different um, patterns that imitate crabs. Um, but um, but that is the ideal thing here. The ideal thing is flies of this size, around this size, and it's also perfect for all your salmon flies if you're fishing water that has maybe a bit slower current and uh, and stuff uh, because because this will just move and move and move and be very erratic and just 
just look, looks absolutely awesome. And uh, um, a lot of people, a, a lot of the uh, the producers of the the, the rabbit pelts, they they actually um, bleach them and then they can dye them into all these very very awesome combinations of just just cool cool colors. So the the amount of available materials and and colors for the rabbit furs are just just enormous. You can get exactly what you want for exactly that type of fly. So rabbit, the go-to material for all songers in a variety of great variety of colors and just a cool material. Next in line we have the opossum. Opossum is available in uh, in two different uh, of, of two different oranges. Uh, you're talking about the, uh, the, the, the there is the uh, U.S. opossum and then there is the Australian opossum, but uh, most widely used is the U.S. opossum. Uh, opossum has a lot of different uh, properties from all the other hairs that we talked about. In that, a piece of opossum uh, fur here is is basically is basically uh, you have the full pelt, and then that is cut into four pieces, and and this means that you have different hair length of each individual piece of uh, of opossum here. Um, uh, most generally, you will have the longest hairs. Um, on, on, on one side and then you'll have shorter hairs on the other side of, of, uh, of, of a piece of opossum like this. This means that you can actually, you will actually be able to cut your own. These are not available in pre-cuts due to the fact here uh, regarding the, the, uh, the hair density and, and hair length. Um, so, so you'll have to buy a piece of this and if you want an, an opossum songer wing, you'll have to cut your own. But you can make shorter uh, wings on one side for smaller flies and then you can really make some large large songer wings on the other side here this is not as heavy as the rabbit or as the uh, as the other materials we we talked about due to the fact that the density of hairs here are less uh, than than on both rabbit and uh, and bisam and uh, and uh, and rabbit this means that you can make quite a long quite a big sunker wing here and um, without this soaking up too much water it's also possible to make a really really long really tapered wing um, that that in the water it will look really big in in your fly box but it will not be as big in the water but it will have a lot of the same movement because you can make this longer so so a really great option for for your bigger salmon flies like uh, flies like uh, like this this slightly bigger uh, monger or um, or there is also the option uh, and you can see I've done that with this piece of red fur here I've used this a lot for a fly uh, that's called the pluck Francis because on one side here you actually have now hair lengths that are long enough that you can you can cut this off and basically make a traditional hair wing for your for your smaller flies where basically you cut this off and then tie it on and then you have a really really awesome because uh, the, 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 the hairs here, they have kind of like an inner glow, kind of like a, a ref they, they reflect light in a certain way. Um, they're quite transparent. It's, it's not the same as polar bear, but it has some of the same properties. Polar bear is, is really unique because it has all of these different, uh, it catches light in a, in a certain way. And the opossum has kind of like the same thing. Not as as much as the polar bear, but but it's 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 in the same general area. Um, so with a piece of opossum fur like this, you have the options to tie medium-sized songer flies. You have the option to tie big songer flies, and also you have the option to basically just cut off a bundle of this and make a, a perfect perfect uh, classic hair wing for smaller flies. So. A um, really versatile and uh, and highly uh, um, highly usable product here, um, but in particular, it's the U.S. opossum that has these properties. Moving up in length, then the next step on the ladder is the uh, is the Arctic fox. Um, uh, but I'm going to talk about the marble fox in, 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 in this part as well. The Arctic fox has for a long time been basically the most, uh, the most used and the most go-to type of, uh, of, uh, of hairs for tying your, your, your classic um, hair winged flies like this uh, red butt or like uh, some of the uh, some of the uh, the really widely used uh, frutine flies um, and so on um, uh, 
Arctic Fox is also perfectly suited for um, for uh, for tails on shrimps, and and you can even use some of this as uh, as as in in a dubbing loop to make a hackle. But it's it's starting to be too long for that now, and it it also has uh, has quite some 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 good uses for as the finishing touch on pike flies and stuff. And basically, what uh, an Arctic Fox. Uh, how how the Arctic fox here is 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 built not built but you know <laughs> grown or whatever you want to call it is you have some longer coarser uh, co cover hairs here then you have and, and we can remove these by basically just pulling here and you can see these are coarser than uh, than than the than the normal hairs and then then you have uh, the, the 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 basically the base of the wing here which are not as coarse but still has some some furry part and then you'll have a lot of a lot of woolly part here that is that is as you can see uh, uh, quite a lot uh, quite a lot shorter and basically you can you can remove both the long and then the short one you can leave them in depending on exactly how you want to taper your wing but um I, I often use it like this, so I have a few of the coarser hairs, but I remove as much as possible of the uh, of the shorter woolly hairs here, because otherwise I will get a fly that simply does not dimension correctly. So the Arctic Fox is probably the most versatile and most used material for all your different salmon and sea trout flies, for streamers, for shrimps, for all that sort of thing. But then there is um, a also in the in the fox realm of uh, of hares you have the uh, you have the marble fox and basically marble fox has the same um, properties as the uh, as the arctic fox what differs or di differentiates the uh, the marble fox from the arctic fox is basically the quality here is is higher it has a lot longer hairs um, it's it's more sought after, uh, hence also a bit more expensive. But but the 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 composition of of the actual hair here is is one to one the same as on the uh, on the Arctic fox. This is just longer, so you will be able to make the really really big bulky flies for fishing sea trout in the night, or or the really big uh, salmon flies for the for the for the early uh, early spring fishing for salmon. Or even for even better for uh, for big pike flies uh, because because you can get some really really long hairs here. Um, the overall wing on, on a marble fox than on a than on an arctic fox is quite a lot longer. So if you're in the market for for something along the lines of the arctic fox, then you should check out the marble fox. And we have a huge selection at, at Nordic Anglers of both of these types of hairs, perfectly ideally suited for for the wings of all the different types of salmon sea trout trout and uh, and and uh, and, uh, and and big flies for perch and, and pike but also for salt water so that's it for the fox for now so there was an important thing that i almost forgot um, and that is uh, the tanuki tanuki is is really really um also a quite unique product because um, the thing about tanuki is it's 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 probably the softest it's probably even softer than the than the rabbit and uh, but it's it's also a lot longer than the rabbit so it has some uses that that simply the rabbit cannot fulfill i'm just gonna blow slightly on this so you can see how alive this really is this makes up uh, is, is composed uh, where it has a f uh, quite a, uh, quite a few uh, I, I said that uh, incorrectly it has uh, not a lot of, uh, of, of, of coarser longer uh, hairs but then the, the the general way that this uh, this hair is, is composed is is it's easy to make quite a long quite a great wing that that really really just is is the most lively and the most alive of all the hairs here um, um, in in the water so this is ideally suited for for slower moving currents or for even still water and um, it has about the same length as uh, as as the arctic fox but it just is way way more easy to use and and um, and also has a lot more movement so the tanuki here is, is is available in a lot of different colors as you can see you get a you get a fairly big piece of uh, piece of, uh, of of material here and is available in in all the right colors and 
perfectly suited for for all the things that you would you would use for uh, for uh, you you would use a, a hair wing for. Um, we of course have a big selection in in Nordic Anglers, so swing by the shop to see this Tanuki, awesome product. Here I have a piece of goat, and goat has um, is is again quite unique because it is so long. So goat is is probably one of the longest materials you can get your hands on, and that's also why it's so widely used, in particular for flies of this type. This is one of the most deadly salmon flies ever invented, or at least at and it and interpretation of that pattern this is the sunray shadow and uh, and the sunray shadow is, is is a fly that basically has no body it just has a really long goat or in in the olden days a uh, monkey uh, wing and um, but uh, the goat here uh, just really really um, uh, is great because it is so long. So you can use the goat either on its in its own right uh, in a fly like the uh, the sunray shadow, or you can mix it with, for instance, the marble fox uh, to to get a longer fly that has the, the the right drop shape, that has the right shape in the water, and to give a fly more more length. Um, a good friend of mine um, uh, is also using the goat here a lot for 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 his big flies for for for, for Dorado. He fishes in Argentina, Golden Dorado, um, and and it can be it can really really be applied with good success in 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 predator flies for pike and musky. So goat fairly inexpensive, very very long hairs. Again, because it's so long and so fine, it 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 really gives the fly a lot of sway and a lot of uh, a lot a lot of a lot of um, distinct movement in the water that that really sets out the goat from any other materials out there. So goat, um, perfect for long flies. Perfect to add with with other types of hairs if you really want your fly to have this long profile. So, this is the bucktail, the the final piece of uh, of, of hairs we're gonna we're gonna talk today, and bucktail is is almost like a science in its own right. I've, I've uh, one of my fellow YouTubers or, or what you want to want to call it, uh, Gunnar Brahma, uh, has made quite a long video only about bucktail. So so bucktail is 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 unique. Um, because it has some properties that not any other hair out there have. First of all, it's 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 fairly long, so you can use it for for even really big flies. But also, it's fairly stiff, so it does not collapse in the same way as 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 other materials if the current is really really strong. And that's why I use this uh, a lot for. It's used a lot for for salmon flies like uh, like the snelda. Or the golden killer, for instance, a fly that I've had particularly good um, experiences with. But it's also awesome for um, for all types of bait fish and has traditionally been used for for just an in outrageous amounts of different saltwater tropical saltwater flies. It's perfect for bait fish. It's perfect as antennae for uh, for shrimps. Um, but another thing where bucktail is probably the most wide, one of the most widely used materials, is for these big, big predator flies. Like uh, this one is called the the, the canary, the bird ring gigar. I can't recall how, how exactly you pronounce that now, but it, it's it's one of those birds with a lot of different colors that you have in a cage. Um, you can have it in a cage, of course. Some of them are in the wild as well. I hope at least. Um, but the bucktail here is um, is one of the materials that if if I were only to uh, be allowed to tie with let's say let's say five materials, bucktails is really really high on the list of those five five materials. So um, it, it's it's available in a lot of different uh, in a lot of different sizes and and a lot of different um, um, pieces in in Nordic anglers. We have small bags of, of only small pieces of bucktail. If you want, for instance, a magenta, but but you don't think you're gonna use a, a whole tail, then you can buy that. And we have a medium-sized bucktail, and then we have a large-sized bucktail. Bucktail is one of those materials that are a bit hard to to get your hands on every now and then, um, and uh, and in particular in the really really big ones. So if you out there are looking for for good bucktails, you can order some at the web shop, and and if you leave us a comment uh, to the to the order. 
um, where you detail exactly how you want your bucktail to, to, to look, then we will do our best to find you exactly the piece of bucktail that you are looking for. So, widely used, really, really, really well for just a ton of different styles, different types and different uh, flies for different fish. Bucktail, bucktail is versatile, it's durable and it's awesome. That was it for this uh, this uh, walkthrough of, uh, of not all the different hairs, but at least uh, quite a lot of, of the different types of hairs. What are their uses and, uh, and, and how do you apply these different types of hairs to exactly your type of flies and, and your patterns, the patterns you, for instance, have in your head or, 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 or you see from other fly fishermen and, and stuff. Um, I hope that you could use this, uh, this, this video um, and, uh, and, and that it, it gave you a broader horizon um, on, on what the different types of hairs are best suited for. All of these different types of hairs and all the materials shown in this video are of course, as always, available from Nordic Anglers, our web shop based in Denmark. And, uh, and we ship worldwide. So, if ever you need any types of fly tying, and fly tying hairs in particular, then swing by, uh, swing by and, uh, and see that. Another thing, it would mean quite a lot to me if you would simply just like this video. If you liked it, please feel free to, to make a comment. And also, if you would subscribe to the channel here, that would mean a lot to us. Because we, um, we basically really, really are collecting all the likes, all the subscribes that we can get our hands on. So, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, there's nothing left to say, but I wish you all the best of luck out on the water.